Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be with you once again for another episode of the Author Spotlight. The Author Spotlight is where I go behind the scenes with those who are change agent thought leaders, those who are planet shakers, who are making a difference in their community and around the world. I have a change agent on here today. I'm so excited to be here to be able to interview Barbara Tyshore. She is an amazing young lady. She's doing great things, and I had to bring her on. We have uh, some a mutual friend who was allow, allowing us to be able to connect with each other. And before I move on into that, I just want to make sure that I let you know you all know a little bit about Barbara and the things that she has going on. She is a uh, CSP has been motivational, inspirational and educational, sharing her talents as a professional speaker, both across the U.S. and internationally. For the past 13 years, she has spoken to over 500 audiences in multiple corporations, government agencies, and for countless conferences and associations. Ms. Teicher brings 25 plus years of experience developing leaders in Fortune 50 to 500 companies. She specializes in leadership development and effective business communication has been seen or quoted on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox News, and the author spotlight here in just a second, by the way. She is the author of the book, It's How You Say It, Effective Business Communication Skills, endorsed by Kent Babb of the Washington Post. So I just wanted to introduce the wonderful woman herself, Miss Barbara, how are you doing, Miss Teicher? I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm well, uh, thank you, it's great to see you, Darren. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, anytime. And could you explain a little bit, um, if you don't mind, uh, fill in any of the gaps, anything that I might have left out or anything that you want to share with our audience that I didn't say in the bio? I just shared just a little bit about your bio, but if you want to expand upon that anyway, please do so now, if you don't mind. Well, I think some of the, the pieces of the bio that aren't in there are just kind of real life. Everybody has experiences that you may or may not think are relevant, but when you go to writing your book, whether it's the corporations and the companies that you've worked for, the people that you know, the experiences that you have, all of those things kind of lend to the book. So even though that doesn't work well on paper, so to speak, for a bio, it all adds to, to the story that you want to tell. Awesome. Awesome. It's how you say it. Could you explain because you've been able to live, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a great life. I know we all have ups and downs and it's a journey. It's a process. But why this book with all the things that you've been able to experience? Why this book as. As basically like your calling card of your, your, your introduction, why did you go with this book? You know, um, Darren, I became really intrigued many, many years ago, not only with the words people use, but how they communicate. So a lot of times people think communication is just you and I talking, but there's so much more to that. And it fascinated me, not just the words people use or the tone of voice that they use or the inflection or whatever, but all of those nuances that go into this thing they call communication. And as I was in corporate America, the nuances between how do, how do executives talk? How do managers talk? How do people that care about each other talk to each other? And how do people that don't care about each other talk to each other? And, and if you've ever been in a situation in a work environment where one person walks in the room and you go, oh, great, they're here. And another person walks out of the room and you go, oh, great, they left, right? What, what is it? Why is it that some people click so to speak. And why is it that some people are just like oil and water, even with the best of intentions? And, and in my uh, experience, I thought it was important that people that wanted to realize what those differences were. What are the things that bring people together in a relationship through a communication standpoint? And what are those things that even though you may not realize it, are really tearing those relationships apart, whether it's in a business environment or a personal environment. That was kind of the, the impetus for it. Wow, wow. And you know, it's amazing because when you brought up that scenario, I, I thought about it and you are so right about that. There, there are, and if we're all honest, we will all say that we know 
but that there are people when you leave out, everybody's like, oh, or right. is this, or if they are out on a day and, and, and everyone else is working, everyone's like, everything just seems like it's just great. It's phenomenal. I mean, everybody's connecting with each other. Uh, the morale is up and, and it's, you know, it's sad to say, but I mean, but that's so, so true about how uh, it is. And you explored it a little bit. And, you know, and when I'm thinking about you in this book process, what made you believe, Barbara, you know, when so many have failed at the task, what made you believe that you could get it done and get a book out? <laughs> you know, I think everybody, when they start to write a book, has the best of intentions, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. And, and then life happens, right? So, so when you say to me, why do you think that you believed you could do it when no one else could? Mine actually was a catalyst. And what I mean by that is I applied for um, a speaking opportunity internationally and I was turned down. And fortunately for me, when I asked a woman, could you please share what I could have done differently? She said, Barb, in all honesty, the thing that made the difference was that you aren't published. And I thought, okay, that's it. You know, I'm finishing it. And I think everybody needs that little, that little spur or that little, I can do this. And for me, it was the knowledge that what I wanted was extremely important to me and that the only way I could get that to make my dream come true was to finish my book. And the only difference between a dream and reality was a plan to get there. And that's what I did. Mm, mm, I love that. <sighs> So, so, so many of you, I just want to take time to speak to the audience who are, who are tuning into this. And for those who are aspiring to be an author, they want to join the author's uh, book. They want to, want to be a part of the author's club. They want to see how it is, the feeling at a book lunch. Uh, they want to have an Amazon bestseller or a New York Times bestseller, whatever list you want to create and come up with these days. Barbara brought up something. I didn't make this up. I didn't come up with this. This is Barbara's personal story here that we're talking about. But I want you to realize and think about it. If you keep hearing the same things over and over, it might be some truth to it for us individuals who have no reason. Barbara took time out of her busy schedule to be able to pour into us today. And she's sharing with you the difference, the thing that bridged the gap between her and that international speaking engagement or the thing that caused her or hinder her from getting there was not having a book, not being published, not being looked at as an expert. And for some of you out there, these are transferable skills that we're talking about. For some of you, it's not just about the book. Are you getting it done? Or are you just coming up with lofty, uh, lofty ideas? You're doing the woo-woo, but you're not engaging. You're not executing. You're not doing what you need to do. You're not putting the goals down. You're not being grateful for the opportunity that you've been given and pouring out to people and having something tangible that they can leave with. It's hindering you right now. And so by her being basically punched, punched in the face by being told, but that was a great no because it allowed her to say yes to her greatness, yes to her abilities, yes that she realizes that it's another level I need to go to and basically give her a good swift kicking as we would say down south in Texas, that my grandmother would tell us if we wouldn't get out there and clean up quick enough. But uh, that's another thing. But, you know, but at the same time, what's going to give you that swift kicking? What's going to be that punch for you? What's going to be that nudge? What's going to be that thing that's the catalyst for you to allow for you to walk into your destiny, walk into your greatness? So I thank you so much, Barbara, for sharing that with us, because a lot of those who are tuning in, they're seeing you with the success. They're seeing you with the book. They're hearing of the, you know, the, the Fortune 50 to 500 companies and a lot of them being mesmerized. But they some of them are overlooking that you had to get it done, that you oh, yeah. day, you had to go in there. Whatever, whatever you had to do to get it done, you had to go in and make sure that you got it done. You know, you bring up a great point because it doesn't matter who you are. If you need or want to write a book, you brought up a great point, Darren, and that is there is a difference between being busy and being productive, right? Mm -hmm. I can say, I'm going to work on my book, and I sit down in my office, and I have my coffee, and I've got my ideas, and, you know, <laughs> and then an hour later, you're like, oh, man, my time's over. But, but you need one of the things I did 
was I set a goal for myself and not a goal of I'm going to write five pages, right? For me, and everybody's different. For me, it was Tuesday when I work, I'm mm -hmm. going to work on this X story, right? Mm -hmm. And when I sat down to work on it, I didn't think of how many words should I, how many words do I have down? How many words? I just sat there and went, okay, what is this story? And I just banged it up. Didn't have to be pretty. Didn't have to be punctuated well. It didn't, I just got it on the paper. And once you get it on the paper, don't worry about it, right? Mm. Get those ideas out. And, and again, what you just said, the difference between being busy and being productive. And if you're not going to be productive, don't take your time just to be busy. It's Ooh. not going to be. Ooh. I told you, I told you, Miss Tasha is going to drop these value bombs on you today. I knew she was going to do it. I, I feel the stuff explode. Do you see stuff moving over here? Stuff is moving over here. She got my mind going over here. I knew Good. she was going to do it uh, because that's definitely a, a plus. You know, and if you don't mind sharing with our audience because you share with the productivity and how you got things done by uh, your process of writing and how you use the Tuesdays to be able to implement and get the content down. But what is the one thing, how has your life improved? Uh, and you can share various ways, whether it be through someone giving you a testimonial, whether it be uh, speaking engagements, whether it be uh, your own personal family life. Could you share just some different uh, experiences that you've had as far as how you being a published author has improved your life? Wow. Um, there's a lot of them. I'll give you three. One, I was at a conference speaking. And after the conference, I was in the back and I had my book. I was autographing the book and selling it. And this woman came up to me and she said, I, I, I want to tell you, she goes, I'm buying another book for my husband, but this book changed my life. And I kind of laughed at first. I thought she was kidding. And, and she says, I'm serious. And she said, and the reason was, I didn't know what I didn't know. She said, when I read your book, I saw myself in the book. She said, but the bad news is that I never knew it because nobody would tell me. She says, but when I read it, I realized it was me. She goes, so my husband said, I need to read that book. She said, no, you need your own copy, you know, which I thought was kind of funny. But so, so that was um, something that was a one-on-one, -on -one, kind of a, a personal thing that really meant a lot to me. Um, the second was, it is, it is a credibility factor. I, I am a speaker. And one of the things that it does, when you take the initiative, when you take the time, when you, when you, you know, have the book out there and it's on Amazon and it's, you know, people go, hey, you know what, that person, she, she put her money where her mouth is, right? If she's got all this information, then, then she needs to share it. So the second thing was the, the impression and the automatic credibility factor it gives. And then the third thing is, you, you may think, why would anybody want to know this. I mean, I've got this much that might be interesting, but, but what else would they know? But you'd be shocked that people are people. And, and the thing about communication that excites me is it is not just words. You said this yourself. When someone walks into the room, there's a difference in the atmosphere, call it whatever you want. People may call it the energy. Some people may call it whatever you want. But even that feeling you're, you're communicating, you're communicating uneasiness, you're communicating excitement, you're communicating love. I mean, you don't have to use words. So the story that I'm telling, the third impact, the story tell has changed many, many lives in the workshops I do, the, the keynotes that I speak at, the message that I give, because there are things that people can relate to. So whatever the book is that you're audience is writing. They are writing it because they know there is a message out there that other people need to hear. So awesome. those three ways would, would be the biggest personally, business wise, and then the story it's, it's helped so many people. And Ms. That's Tyson, what say. I love what you just shared with, with those, uh, like I said, those value bombs, those nuggets, whatever you want to call them, you know, I, you know, but it's, once you see how it changes lives, like you say, you kind of got chuckled, you chuckled a little bit, but it really helped that woman see something. Now, oh, yeah. 
of it was great that you were able to speak from the stage and i shared it with uh, uh speakers who were doing com consultations the whole night it's great but i always say that you don't know what your content is doing while you are asleep and i want a lot of you out there listening to this you don't know the impact that you are making across the globe with someone who has your materials that you are totally unaware of and what it can do for you and others that you don't even know this happening you know we um just a little bit about that is this lady wasn't even able to detect i uh, had a self-awareness that she was having these issues nobody had communicated that with her now here is basically barbara being a total stranger but she impacted that woman to the point where it was a game changer not only for her but just think about the ramifications of that it impacted her marriage those around her the whole nine because now all of a sudden she could do something about some issues that was a liability to her you by you creating that content was being an asset to her now just think about if barbara wouldn't have went forward and got the book out of course she need to do for what she need to do for her career but look at the life that would change if it's just that one life somebody's life has been changed by what barbara did and that's a perfect segue but i want you just to share with the audience because i want y'all to get this book i want you to make sure that you connect with her find out about other services that she provide have her come and speak for your corporation or for your business association so if you don't mind barbara could you share with our audience where can they find you and where can they purchase the book absolutely thank you uh, you can purchase the book on Amazon uh, the name of the book is it's how you say it uh, mm -hmm. and it's effective business communication skills it's got uh, a woman in a black suit with her with her hands up I'm, I'm sure I probably got one somewhere so here is the cover of it if they're looking on Amazon and they want to find it that's what it looks like you can reach me, uh, I have several divisions in my company, you can reach me, Barbara, B-A-R-B-A-R-A, -A -A, at it's how you say it, dot com. That's one way. Uh, if you have women in your organization, I also uh, do a program that's called Propeller, Propel Her, uh, and that uh, you can reach me through that also. So those, uh, that it's how you say it, dot com is my email, and you can get the book on Amazon. Awesome, awesome. And, and, and now let me dig a little bit deeper. Could you share it? Because we, we love uh, we love women. We, we love what women do. Women are so awesome. Could you explain and go a little bit deeper on Propel Her uh, and share with our audience a little bit about what, what's the origin of it and what, what it's created for? I, I'm so glad you asked. It may shock your listeners to know that only about 5% of women at the C-suite in Fortune 500 companies are women. And, and I believe that there is a wealth of talent and skills out there that's either untapped or unrecognized. So what Propel Her does, and I'm gonna reach over here and just grab one of my cards off my desk. Um, what Propel Her is, I work with organizations and associations and I accelerate women to be influential leaders with greater impact. Mm. And how I do that is by a, a three-step propeller system, I call it, that accelerates three critical pieces that actually improves insight, influence, and impact with these women and brings them through a way to not only let their voice be heard, but also to let it be heard for the right reasons with the right impact from the right perspective. So, so it's how do I get noticed and how do I let my company notice me for the right reasons to show those skills and to develop that skill set for women in business. Mm. I'm very passionate about that too. Awesome. Awesome. I can tell that. I seen, I seen, like you said, it's how you say it. And I seen that energy burning. I see right. it. When I, when I said that you lit up, I mean, you just went to another level. I even, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, Whoa, I'm like, well, that's what I'm talking about. I feel some fire in here, baby. Oh man, Barbara just stood up on me. She went to reach for the card. I'm like, okay, now that's what I'm talking about. Whoop, whoop. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. And you know what? You brought up a great point because I, I feel like, uh, and especially even with our company, um, a majority of our staff are women. And um, it's not, but I mean, just because it's just a talent pool. And I'm not trying to 
right. push anybody out. I'm, but you're mm-hmm. missing greatness if you don't have women around you. I, I, I really believe in it. I mean, I, I'm i all for the women. I'm for men as well. But, you know, for those who are discounting what, a, what women can bring to the, the workplace as far as creativity, their know-how, well, how they know how to juggle so many things. I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I don't know where in the world I will be without the women in my life. So how I'm even able to be on this interview today because of some women. I mean, the women, when they with you, they ride with you all the way. So uh, so I'm glad that you're doing that because I believe that coming up, I see like leaders like yourself. That's why I brought you on. I didn't just make that up because it sounds cool for us planet shakers, um, change agents, thought leaders, you know, key people of influence like yourself. I just want to commend you uh, for what you're doing. Um, because you, you're you successful in so many ways and it just shows how selfless that you are for you just to take time out, not only for this broadcast, but uh, to pour into others. And, you know, you could just be off uh, with some Mai Tais or something and just relaxing and chilling, but you're encouraging and you're bringing on a new wave of leaders and helping other people reach their full potential. So I just want to give say congrats and thank you for making it a world a different place. Guess what? Because our marketplace our corporations, our world, because people will be able to give more because people like you are pouring into our leaders. So I thank you so much for that, Barbara. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And Barbara, you know, I, go ahead. No, no, I just, um, to kind of piggyback what you said, I, I think what's exciting too, Darren, is that corporations are just starting to wake up to the fact that there is a disparity at those upper management, mid-management even, yes. levels. Uh, and, and the question is why, and that's what I help pull out and, and discover. And a big piece, when I mentioned earlier, insight, influence, and impact, uh, a big piece, not all, but a big piece of that influence is communication and mm-hmm. how you relate and communicate to, to other people. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And Barbara, and could you... Before we leave, it's someone who's listening to this episode. Uh, it's a woman out there, or it's a man who's saying, you know, Barbara has it going on. I can't even fathom the idea of speaking to these different type of corporations that she's spoken to and the amazing things that she's doing. She's an author. Could you share with them? You, you, you talked a little bit about it earlier in the interview about the mindset of thinking past, no matter uh what people think or how many books out there are still putting your information out there and because people are people, they're human, they still can benefit from it. Could you share with that person who's straddling the fence, who's wondering and thinking to themselves, I don't know if my story um, is relevant or I don't think that I'm important enough. Could you share with them the importance of them going ahead and sharing the story with the world? You know, when you were talking there and I was thinking about that and, and let me give the folks listening out there this example. Mm-hmm. You may not think that the book you have or the information that you have or whatever is very important, <clears throat> but think back to when you were growing up. There was one person, maybe a teacher, maybe a coach, maybe someone from your church or whatever, who, who was kind of like your hero or she wrote, and, and they made such an impact on your life that you really wanted to do well for them, da, da, da. and even though you're an adult, you can think of them right away right now. That person may never know how they impacted your life and other people's life, but how you would be different without it. The good news is, you know that. If you write your book, how many people are you not giving the opportunity to be changed by the message and the information and and, and whatever it is that your story is, you're not giving them the opportunity to change their life because you think it's not important. But look back to your own life. How many people have made an impact that may never know that? You have a strong story to tell or your listeners would not be on this video. They've got it in here or they wouldn't be sitting here. So if you're listening to this, you're listening to this because you know what you have is important. You just aren't sure because of your confidence. But you know what? The only thing that's standing between you and the success that you want is your mindset of saying, you know what? The only thing that's in my way is me. Get out of your own way and let this run. Listen to Darren. Listen to the people that he's got on and the messages that they're sending because the only thing to fear, uh, how the saying goes, is fear itself. 
I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Great message. Great message. I really appreciate you so much again for coming on. Oh, oh man, I'm, 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 hey, you know what? I don't. My staff, everybody gonna think I'm crazy. They think I just had one cup of coffee, not a full cup of coffee. But I've been on an interview with you right now. I feel I don't know if I'm gonna run some laps or run through a wall. <laughs> But I, I tell you one thing, you know, it's how you say it. So I'm, I'm excited about this. And I thank you so much once again for taking time out of your busy schedule. We will make sure that we have information about Barbara and how you can get in contact with Miss Tyshore uh, in the show notes. And make sure that you tune in every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time where you'll be able to hear interviews with change agent thought leaders, planet shakers, just like Miss Barbara Tyshore. Every week, you can go to self publish the letter in 30 days.com or go to our YouTube page or it's DMP Enterprises to be able to catch up on other people who are changing mindsets, helping people share their story and impacting the globe through their business savvy. So, thank you again, Miss Barbara. Do you have anything else you want to share with the audience before we close out? Um, not really. Don't give up. One foot in front of the other. Best way to finish it to start. Thank you so much for having me on. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. And remember, this is the year for your new book. We'll talk to you next time. Be blessed.